Good afternoon. Thank you for having me here today. This has been a wonderful dialogue, and I'm just sorry that more of my colleagues from the School of Social Work aren't here uh, to hear this because we're on the front lines, and we really need to be educated. And you would be so surprised on a graduate level what isn't being discussed. And so um, I'm really happy and proud to be here, and um, it is a great honor to respond to Professor Mayuri's work, Reason from Race. I also want to thank Martha, who's always so kind to me and uh, introduced me to this work. And uh, she is always bringing very interesting projects to me, and uh, I want to thank you for that. Um, as I mentioned, as she said, I'm a graduate student, so, um, and I graduate in a few short months. And uh, although I have absolutely no legal background, reasoning from race pulled me into the compelling and complex legal history of civil rights for women and people of color in this country. And I certainly had to take my time and read reasoning from race, but it was well worth it to learn a lot of legal phrases and words that I formerly did not know. When I started reading reasoning from race and thinking about Pauli Murray, I was reminded of a sermon by um, Minister Marilyn Sewell, who recounts the story of Rosa Parks. Sewell declares, that day she sat down on the bus. She, Rosa Parks, was to have said, I'm tired. She expounds, it was an existential moment of truth, and she did what she had to do. She goes on, this is what is meant by integrity. When something has integrity, it is undivided, it is complete, unbroken, and she would be broken no more. She continues, she would claim her wholeness. Now this journey towards wholeness is a journey that invites each and every one of us, at least we squander our gifts and regret our days upon this earth. See will concludes her story. Given standard social work values of dignity, and worth of a person, this question of integrity and claiming wholeness strikes me as a very important idea to contemplate at this time. I work with individuals who are considered to be broken, outsiders, separate, separated from what society accepts to be normal. At my current placement at Whitman Walker Health, the clients are HIV positive, trauma survivors. Some are current and former substance abusers. Some have been incarcerated, and most are struggling with mental illness. My education and training teaches me that behaviors, certain behaviors like this, are disordered, disorders, non-functional, and pathological. The social, work instilled, the social work values instilled in us also state that clients are empowered by their own self-determination. So these conflicts come into con conflict as chronically ill are labeled and stigmatized by a society where everybody strives to be perfect. How do we heal these intersections where brokenness, where normal and pathological overlap, diminishing the quality of life and absolving many from their natural rights? This notion of claiming one's wholeness seems to be a part of the dynamic dilemma that is outlined in Reasoning from Race. The book sheds lights on the intersections of race, gender, and class, and how they are often limited and even diminished in order to forward only parts of the equal rights movement that is more palatable to the establishment. Professor Maiori outlines the question from a judicial standpoint. How do we bring together all the ideological components of a struggle for rights for some in a country that was not designed to accommodate everyone, the whole? How do we strategically stake claim to the entire promise of liberty and justice for all? Pre Professor Mayori points out in her legal history, Reasoning from Race, that history is full of moments in which individuals on many levels decided they were tired and had enough, and they would stake claim to the promise of e equality but often staking claim was only just the beginning. Professor Maiori gives me readers many detailed examples of the integrity it took to embark upon often long and strenuous legal battle for individual rights. Professor Maiori also gave us an uh, outstanding uh, portrait of Pauli Murray in her many attempts at planting seeds of justice. These seeds would take many years to bloom and even flower. Murray, too, struggled with society's lack of acceptance and her, of her whole self. She, too, sat at the back of the bus and tried to gain 
access to great institutions and defined her own gender, gender identity, all the while trying to manage her own emotional reactions to her mind and body's betrayals. The world around her was not ready for the many facets of Pauli Murray, but she didn't let that limit her greatness. Relka's poem, I Live My Life, resonates with me as I think of Murray's journey for wholeness. I live my life in winding rings, which spread over earth and sky. I might not ever complete this last one, but that is what I will try. I circle around God's primordial tower, and I circle 10,000 years long. And still I don't know if I'm a falcon, a storm, or unfinished song. As I think back to this question of wholeness and the intersections of the many parts of us, this question of how do we bring wholeness and how do we see our clients as whole has three distinct qualities that I feel encourage a person's integrity in that process. The first quality is intellectual curiosity. You have to want to know about your clients and the people you're working with. Also, something that's been mentioned here is cultural context. You can't know these clients on an upper level when you don't know the culture that they're living in. Also, somehow you have to uh, approach your practice with a sense of emotional freedom or openness. I believe that bringing intellectual curiosity, cur uh, cultural context, and emotional freedom to our daily journey gives us the authentic authenticity that, that will live out its own truth. The clients I work with know when you're being authentic. They're sometimes known as a tough crowd. <laughs> they require that we interact with them with their entire selves, and they don't mind confronting those who they don't think have their best interest at heart. It's a challenging endeavor to bring everything to these collaborative efforts. Sometimes I'm exhausted at the end of the day, and I feel uncertain about my ability to foster change. Many of them have lived with HIV for 20 to 30 years and they are not concerned about my limits. All of them show me how to survive a challenge, a real serious life-threatening challenge. And these clients have spoken on numerous occasions about their own moments of truth, like Rosa Parks, admitting that it's okay to be tired and sitting down. They cl they've claimed their lives, all the while grappling with a virus that beckons them to reject any hope of a long life. They teach me that this type of integrity in the face of a life-threatening obstacle may mean not giving up the parts of you that others reject. It may mean claiming that what that doesn't exist in the eyes of others like rights. It may mean making judicial inroads on only paved, slightly paved ways. Authenticity may mean giving up and gaining at the same time in order to sow seeds of hope for a future harvest. Somehow, I believe through this type of struggle, it transforms us and it absolves us from living by the expectations of others. And then possibly, it expands our own sense of ourself. And most hopefully, with this type of struggle comes the change of the public imagination about what is acceptable and what is normal. Perhaps this invitation to wholeness that Minister Sewell refers to is not so much a directive, but something that we answer to and say yes. Professor Mayuri gives an outstanding example of little known advocates who said yes to the struggle and yes to wholeness and would try to repair the brokenness and divides of our nation legally. Reasoning from race highlights how many intersections of a movement came together but pushed each other out at the same time leaving many on the outside looking in. In conclusion, Polly Murray get herself gives words to this struggle to bring her humanness into a collective space of harmony. In Reasoning from Race, as she says this, as an American, I inherit the magnificent tradition of an endless march towards freedom and dignity, towards, and dignity for all mankind. Thank you for having me. <laughs>